October the 18th, 2015. Uh, we want you to know that God loves you. He's not angry at you. And that he's not mad at you. He's mad about you this morning. Hallelujah. God loves you. We welcome you here. And we are recording this for your benefit so that you may know the word of truth, the word of God. You know, I don't know how many heard about this, but it's been all over the news this past week. There was a, this church in, uh, in upstate New York somewhere. It's called Word of Life Church. And they beat, this couple beat their two children. One was 17 and one was 19. Beat the 19-year-old to death trying to get him to confess his sins. Did you hear about that? No. Okay. So you can have a title, Word of Life, but you know what? If you're ministering death, you're not ministering life. Amen? Yes. And, these, and, and the pastor in the congregation was a small group that kept to themselves. Amen? This is why you can never become exclusive. You can never say that you're the only one that's got the truth. Amen? Because nobody's got all the truth. Not even me or not even us here at Restoration of Hope Ministry. Every one of us has been given a measure of truth. And some may have a greater measure than others. But truth comes from Jesus. Truth comes from the Holy Spirit. And when you uh, beat somebody up and for 10 hours and kill him with, with blows and bruises and kicks to try to get him to confess his sins, I don't know what planet you're from. But you're not from the kingdom of God, I can tell you that much. Amen? My Bible tells me that God is love. Amen? Amen? And that in God there is no darkness at all, that He is light, and in Him there is no darkness. Amen? And if we're going to manifest God, then we have to manifest life and life and love. And if you don't know, you don't have enough sense to know that you can't beat somebody to confess their sins, then there's something wrong with you, definitely something wrong with you. Amen? I haven't been able to get this thought out of my spirit this week. Wednesday night we were talking about uh, ministering out of Second Peter chapter 1. About growing in grace and growing in the true knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said something to you. I said that everything that we need is in, imprinted in the seed. Okay? Everything, when you plant a seed, I don't care how small it is, that the Bible says the mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds. Okay? And, but when you plant that mustard seed, the DNA of that seed is in that seed. Whether it be a fig tree or an oak tree or an orange tree or an apple tree, that seed has its DNA of what it is supposed to be. Right. Amen. Amen? Right. And so everything that that seed needs to grow up to what it was ordained by God to be was imprinted in it from the very beginning. Okay? Just like you and I. Okay? The Bible says that he that is begotten of God cannot sin because his seed remained in him and he cannot sin. See, Peter said that we've been born again not by an incorrupt by a corruptible seed, but by an incorruptible seed, by the living and abiding word of God. You all know the parable that Jesus gave. He said the sower went out to sow a seed. And he said, some fell by the wayside. Some fell among thorns. Some fell in, on rocky soil. And some fell on good ground, on fertile ground. And that seed that he's talking about is the Word of God. When he explained that parable, he said the seed is the Word of God. Amen? And so we have that DNA through His Word imprinted, imprinted inside of our spirit. 
so that we can become what He is, so that we can be like Him. Amen? And so I, I found something entitled The Power of the Seed by a person by the name of Tuvia Teldon. And I want to read it to you. It's not that long. But I want to read this to you because it explains very accurately what I'm talking about. Can you spell the gentleman's name? T-U-V-I-A-T-E-L-D-O-N. It says, except for a farmer, a gardener, and those who keep the holistic diet, seeds seem to have very little importance in our lives. We try genetically make lines of oranges that don't have them. We split them out, or rather we spit them out when we eat watermelons, if they still have them, and we avoid them like they plague if we have diverticulitis. But if anyone asks me about where you see life's greatest mysteries, I talk to them about a seed. They are probably the most fascinating part of our world that exists, even more than the unexplored brain. Think about it. This little tiny seed is basically a treasure chest of DNA. Prepare to, in the right circumstances, give birth to any of a, of a variety of beings. This little tiny seed is a treasure, treasure chest of DNA prepared to give birth to any of a variety of beings. Look around you. Probably the chair that you are in came from a seed. The clothes you are wearing, the walls or the paneling of the house you live in, almost all the food you eat, and last but not least, you and another six billion people, including all of their brains, all came from a seed. But what does this have to do with life's mysteries? Well, let's start by looking at a computer chip. Considering that it has much information, it stands on its own as quite an accomplishment. The result of hundreds of brilliant patterns. It can be as small as the tip of a needle, but contains within the programming data for controlling very technical and complicated bits of knowledge. It took many years of science to design it to function properly, and it can perform many functions simultaneously in fulfilling its purpose or carrying the information needed for the proper functioning of your computer. Now let's take an orange seed. It contains within it all the DNA into info that exists about growing a tree. With all the complications, photosynthesis, establishing roots, transferring water and minerals to its body parts, sprouting in season, all this while creating oranges and seeds that will propagate future generations of oranges However, even though the orange seed is much larger than a computer chip, it has one incredible quality that a computer chip does not have. Now, listen to this. It is programmed to transform itself into the very object about which it contains information. Let me say that again. That orange seed is programmed to transform itself into the very object about which it contains information. This will be comparable to creating a computer chip that is programmed to convert itself into an iPhone, or a golf ball, or another seed. Modern computer technology is just the beginning, is just beginning to talk about the possibility of having chips that can become something besides the chip itself. It has an incredible quality that a computer chip does not have. It can transform itself into the very object which it contains information that doesn't peak, uh, I'm not sure what this word is, how you pronounce it, P-I-Q-U-E. 
Okay. Or peak. Peak. Okay, that doesn't peak your interest. Add to this fact that an animal or human seed is much more complicated than an orange seed, and a small fraction of the size of the smallest computer chip, and it grows to the, be something more than complicated than an orange tree. It has the ability to impregnate an egg and merge its data immediately with it to be able to create completely a completely new type of living being with unique features unlike any other. Put, put together all of this and so much more information that we know about seeds and we begin to realize that we are dealing with a biological creation that is truly beyond amazing in its scope and complicated far beyond its small size. The seed is one part of our universe that gives us a small glimpse into the infinite intelligence behind the creation and the functioning of our world. So the next time you spit out a watermelon seed, do it with respect for what that seed is. After all, you came from one. <laughs> Amen? Amen? See, when God created you, you were one of a kind. Amen? Even identical twins. How many, I don't, I've, I've never known any identical twins, but yes, from what have. I've seen them, there is something different about yeah. each one of them. Yeah. Even though they're so yes. much like each other, each one is different. The driller yes. twins. Okay, yeah, the driller twins, for example, yes. They're like mirrors. They're actually opposites, but yet they're not. Yeah, they're actually opposites, but yet they're not. Amen? Yeah, I mean. And, and, so, and so what happens is, your seed, you were created to be exactly who you are. Okay? Now the Bible tells us in Genesis that God created man after his own image and in his own likeness. He said that in Genesis chapter 1. But in Genesis chapter 2, it says that God formed man. Okay? So there's a formation process. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Galatia and told them that, he said, My children, with whom I travail and labor again until Christ be formed in you. Hallelujah. So whenever we become born again, what we call the born again experience, we're born again not of a corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible seed by the living an abiding word of God. Now the word of God is a person. His name is who? Jesus. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Amen. So what is this? This is called the scriptures. And they contain the words of God. Amen? Yes. Words for us to live by. What I'm saying is at the beginning, there wasn't a King James Bible that dropped out of heaven. No, no. Okay? The Word is a person. The logos. The expression of God. The expression of Christ, of who He is. And He put that same DNA inside of you and inside of me. We're going to stop here a second. Because we're going to go to section two. This section was section number one.